Hey guys, welcome back to today's show. I want to ask you, it's summertime, so do you need to slow down for better health and fitness, right? And the reason why I ask this is because there really is just one thing to remember when it seems like there's really not enough time to get your workouts in and get your your healthy things in order, right? Especially it being summertime and you have your kids home for summer and your schedules are different. There are so many interruptions. You have sick family members. Maybe you're the transportation person for those who are carless. You have to shop, prep, cook, clean, do all the things, guys, and I get it. But there really is just one thing to remember when it seems there's not enough time to get in your workouts and to do all your health things. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. So let's get into it. Hey, mama and friend of Jesus. Welcome to Courageous Fit Female. Do you want to get healthy and feel comfortable in your body? Are you up late at night Googling how to have more confidence? And are you afraid you're never going to lose the weight? Do you wake up with ambitious health goals but never seem to have the time to work out or meal prep? Hey, I'm Jacqueline Castro. I am a follower of Jesus, a wife, a mom of two, and a Christian health coach. I too wanted to be healthier for my kids and wished to be energetic and motivated. I wanted to have confidence within myself, feel comfortable in my body, and stop being so self-conscious. But I was afraid of change and afraid of going back to the gym. I told myself that I could figure things out on my own, but I kept failing. Until I found the secret to getting healthy and being comfortable in my body in my 40s. I will teach you how to slowly get back to being active, eat food that's healthy for you, and help you to partner with God in the journey. If you're ready to stop constantly tugging at your shirt and hiding behind others in photos, then grab your Bible and notebook and let's dive into today's episode. Hey guys, so before we get into today's episode, if you haven't yet joined the Facebook group, it's a group of a very intimate size. There's really only as many women that you can count how many fingers are on my hands. Like truly, that is keeping me humble, but I invite you and I encourage you to come over to the Facebook group and get into the group to talk and have discussions about things that I talk about on this episode, things that I talk about on other episodes that you have listened to. And I know you're listening, guys. I can see the numbers. I can see not who's listening, but where in the world people are listening and people are listening. You guys are my peeps, okay? You are my sisters and I know that you have been encouraged and I know that you're still struggling. I know that there are also many of us that are listening that you want to be vulnerable or you want to have accountability. You want to, you know, identify yourself as a Christian woman who's trying to get healthy. And although there are tons of other Facebook groups, I pray that this Facebook group that I have created would be a place that you can trust, that you can come to godly counsel and just a place to feel safe and not feel stumbled by all the other people posting their before and after pics. That's not what this group is about. This group is really truly, yes, about getting healthy and feeling comfortable in your 40s. But first and foremost, it is a place to pour your heart out and talk about spiritual things. Talk about what God is doing in your life when it comes to your health. Like what? how has he convicted you? What is the one thing that you can say that he has done in your life to get you where you're at this point in your health journey? And just to engage in having a conversation about topics that I talk about here on Courageous Fit Female. So if you haven't yet joined it, then go down to the link below. I'll have a link for the Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group. And from there, we can pick up our conversations about the things that we're going to talk about today. So now, today's episode, I am opening up my Bible. So I encourage you to open up yours too. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 through 20 it says so be careful how you live don't live like fools but like those who are wise make the most of every opportunity in these evil days don't act thoughtlessly but understand what the lord wants you to do don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life instead be filled with the holy spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the lord in your hearts And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so I wanted to start off the episode with that verse. Keep your Bibles open. And let's go back to what we talked about in the beginning. 
And that was, it's summertime, right? So the time that I'm recording this is July of 2022, where your kids are off from school, your schedules are all different. There's all these interruptions happening. You might have sick family members. You still have to do all of your personal essentials, right? Your AM routines, like brushing your teeth and tidying up your, I don't know, tidying up your bed, vacuuming your floor, whatever you do on, in your AM routines. You have your PM routines, right? You have your, maybe you have a rotation with your siblings and taking care of your aging parents. I don't know what it is, but we all have these routines in our lives. And come summertime, there's this interrupt, right? That happens. And I know that it can throw us off kelter. And on top of it all, we're not done yet, right? The list can go on. We have work deadlines. We have project deadlines. We have, we want to spend quality time with our kids and spend intentional time with our husband. And we have projects at home. Maybe we have emergencies that happen, right? It happens all the time. Maybe your toilet needs to be changed out, or maybe your sink is broken and you need a plumber to come over. There's just, the list goes on, right? But you guys know exactly where I'm coming from. There are tons of things that are happening. So it's like, how can you slow down when life feels like it's going 100 miles per hour? How do you slow down, let alone carve out time so that health is not pushed to the bottom of the list? Because we know that it can happen. Maybe more often than we'd like to admit that health gets pushed to the bottom of the list. So... The one thing to remember when it seems like there's not enough time, when you have a million things to do and life is going 100 miles per hour, here's the answer. Are you ready? If you guys are note takers and you're writing down notes on this, here it is. Highlight it. Put it in bold, italic, underline it. The answer is, how do you slow down? The answer is love. One word. So as I'm reading Ephesians 5, 15 through 20, It has this whole list. Like There are so many things that God is telling us in this little passage. And a lot of it has to do with he's instructing us, right? The first thing he tells us is to be careful. He says, don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. And we also know in scripture, in Ecclesiastes, it talks about there's a season for everything. There's a time for everything. And then going back to Ephesians It says, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Guys, when we have a thousand things on our list or even just in our mind, how do we praise God? How do we pause when we feel like we need to do it all? We can't do that, right? Verse 17, guys, it says, don't act thoughtlessly. When we have a thousand things to do, we can't slow down for better health and fitness, right? Because we know most of us, we do not find comfort. We do not find that meal prepping, that those are things that bring us comfort. But guess what? God doesn't call us to be living in comfort. He actually requires us to work, right? We need to put in some of the work, guys, we really do. And this is not coming from a perspective of the false doctrine of prosperity. It's not about that kind of comfort. It's just God wants us to be shaped and be refined by putting in the work and having the Holy Spirit refine us through doing things that are not comfortable, right? So working out, doing your meal prep, going shopping, even cleaning, right? But the point of this episode is to really talk about, do you need to slow down for better health and fitness? And what I mean by that is for better health and fitness to happen, you do need to slow down because if you keep putting it to the bottom of the list and say that you need to do your laundry, you need to do, um, you need to go clean the floor, you need to go make the bed, you need to go, like the list goes on guys, that there's always going to be something that needs cleaning. And I get that. I understand. So right now, if you have your notebook, then write down, be honest, guys, write down one to three things that you've been putting over stewarding your health and fitness. Like write it down because you can think about it as you're driving, but I really encourage you to come back to this episode. If you're not able to write things down, there's just something that happens when you put pen to paper 
you have to think about it. You have to think about what you're writing. It gives you the opportunity to be really slow and intentional and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you and to bring to mind the thing that you've been putting off. Maybe maybe you know what it is and you just haven't written it down, but when you write it down and you ask God to help you through it, won't he do it? Okay, so be honest. Write down one, two, or three things that you've been putting off You've been neglecting, you've been pushing aside when it comes to stewarding your health and your fitness because you are choosing to do the 100 mile an hour thing and making health be your last thing on the list always and always and always. And we don't want to do that, guys. So yeah, the answer is love. When you come from a place of love, that's where you're going to be headed the reason why you're working out, the reason why you are trying to better your health is because of love, because of how God loves you and he wants you to take care of the health that he has given you, right? Especially if we don't have different health conditions that another person may have and that other person's actually making the effort, then we're taking our health for granted. So turn off the noisy distractions, get quiet with the Lord Ask him to reveal to you those things that you are deceiving yourself with. Maybe it's comfort. Maybe it's procrastination. And it goes both ways, right? Comfort, you can procrastinate because you're being comfortable. But truly, and in essence, procrastination just really means that you don't have clarity or you don't have direction or you don't have guidance. And that's why you're procrastinating. Maybe you are doing all the other things, you're cleaning and you're doing all the other little mundane things that need to be done, but you keep putting it at the top of the list and putting the important things at the bottom. Maybe you're procrastinating because you just don't have the clarity, you don't have direction, you don't have the guidance, you don't have the accountability. Because if nobody knows that you want to work out, then nobody's going to help you to be accountable to that, right? And so you can use the Facebook group, come and join the Facebook group. And if you need accountability, that could be a small layer, an opportunity for you to make yourself, put yourself out there and say, I'm going to do this many um, things to pursue health in a godly way. And can someone help me to be accountable to that? Like guys, we need to be creative, right? And you can use the Facebook group for that. So again, go down to that link in the show notes and click on it ask to join the Facebook group. It's private, it's free, and I created that group just for you. So going back to your journal, going back to your notebook, these are the five questions that I want you to journal about. Talk to the Holy Spirit, ask God to help you reveal these things, and put your pen to paper, write your answers out, and share it on the Facebook group. Let me know what you guys, what the Holy Spirit prompted you to write down and what he revealed to you. So number one is... What are the time wasters? What are time wasters for you? Write these things down. Figure out what you're doing, what it is that you are finding that is so uncomfortable for you that you are avoiding and you're doing X, Y, and Z instead. Those could be time wasters. I don't know. You need to write it down and figure it out. That's number one. Number two is what's the thing you need God's help on that you keep believing over his truths? So just as an example, maybe you need God's help on the fact that you keep believing that you can't start because you're so fearful that someone's going to judge you. Okay, so write that down. What is it? Number three question is, what are you putting your identity in? What are you putting your identity in? Because ultimately, our identity is to be in Christ. In no other than Jesus Christ who died who redeemed himself so that we can live again. So are you putting your identity in social media? Are you putting your identity in your kids, right? So we can put all these answers, but what it could be just one answer. It could be several answers, but whatever it is, write that down. Number four, how much time are you spending on? And then I want you to write a line and fill in the blank. So how much time are you spending on? I don't, again, fill in the blank because I don't know what it is you're spending time on. Maybe it could be too much time cleaning and you're avoiding your workouts and your meal preps and investing in some time to figure out like how to make healthier choices, 
right? So how much time are you spending on blank? And then write down how much time, do a little time inventory and just guesstimate. Think about it quickly and just say, okay, I think I spend about 17 hours every single week. Okay, so write that down. And then question number five is, what can you cut out? What can you cut out? So will you be okay if you didn't fix your bed for today? Will you be okay if you didn't um, make a casserole today because it requires a little bit more work than if you were just to grill down some um, thin piece of pork chop because it's a little bit quicker and throw in some green beans into the toaster oven instead of starting up the big oven. I don't know what it is for you guys, but what can you cut out? Maybe, it, you know, obvious things like social media or Netflix or YouTube, binge watching, binge listening to podcasts, whatever it is. What can you cut out? And again, going back to the one thing that you remember when it seems there's not enough time for slowing down so that you can have better health and fitness my sisters, the answer is love. Why are you going to get to your workouts when it's so uncomfortable? Well, it's because it's love that you love your kids, right? You want to spend more time with them. Yes, granted, God knows how many seconds, how many days, how many years, how many months that you have remaining in your life. But it's still a part of you having faith in God that when you put your health and your fitness and stewarding your body and doing the effort to do that to do all that and trusting God that he's going to bless you because you're doing this for the kingdom you're doing it for love you're doing it to for the right reasons and the right motives you're not doing it so that outwardly you can have people look at you right so this is really a yes or no question do you need to slow down for better health and fitness if it's a no, then you're probably not listening to this anymore. If it's a yes, you need to slow down because you keep neglecting your health and fitness and you're doing all the other things, then the answer is yes. So it's black or white. But it's also black or white for the answer to why should you slow down? Why should you make time to put in your exercise, your health and make that a priority? It's because of love. And there really is time, guys. We all have the same amount of time. It's just a matter of how we are using our time. So don't act thoughtlessly, just as verse 17 says, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So what does the Lord want you to do? I'm not you. You're not me. We have different roles, but it does say don't be drunk with wine. Maybe you can replace that with don't be drunk with, insert the blank, Netflix, too much cleaning, um, too much logging into your Facebook. I don't know, but it says because, right? God doesn't just tell you what to do. He'll tell you why. It says don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it goes down right there in the last verse, verse 20. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be careful how we live. Let's not live like fools. Let's live like those who are wise. Just as it says in verse 15. And in verse 16, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Guys, these days can be super deceiving. We can think that we're doing all the good things and all the best things. But when it comes down to really doing an inventory of how you're spending your time, we do have enough time. So if you feel like your life needs to slow down, if you feel like everything is just going 150 miles an hour, how you slow down, how you carve out time so that your health is not pushed to the bottom of the list, love. It's love. I'd love it if you come over to the Facebook group, let me know and share what it is that you wrote down, the three things, one, two, or three things that you've been putting over, stewarding your health and fitness, if you need accountability, that's a small layer of accountability while the group is so small. I invite you to come over and let's continue the conversation. That's it for now, my sisters. So let me just pray a blessing over you. Lord, we're so grateful that you have given us your word that we can just 
freely open up scripture and see the instructions that you have for us, Lord. You give nothing to us but good gifts. And Lord, your instructions tell us in Ephesians to be careful how we live and to not live like fools, but to live like those who are wise. I pray for all my sisters listening, Lord, that you would help them, help me, help us to make the most of every opportunity in these days, these days that are evil, Lord, these days that deceive us, these days that, these days that trip us up and lie to us and say that everything that we're doing, it makes us worthy, Lord. We are not worthy, Lord. But when we put our trust and we have faith that it is by your work on the cross, Lord, that made us worthy. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving us good gifts and for reminding us that we need to lean on you. Help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Help us to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among ourselves, making music to the Lord in our hearts, Lord. Help us to give thanks in everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Help us to live by the Spirit's power. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to my sisters here when it comes to health and fitness. And I pray a blessing over their day wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, Lord, whatever roles and responsibilities and tasks that you've assigned to them, that they would continue to be diligent and walk in your ways in all things and give thanks in all things that you do in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey sisters, are you ready to get healthy and create habits that stick and stay partnered with God in the process? It's time to get healthy and create habits that stick so you can feel comfortable in your body. Learn how to be a healthy version of yourself. Identify what's robbing you of having energy. Create a plan so you can finally make time to exercise. And identify what foods are good for you in midlife. Getting healthier is easier than you think when you allow God to lead the way. Imagine if you were healthy because you had habits that stuck. You knew how to keep from gaining the weight back. You had the energy to go outdoors and play with your kids. You had time to be consistent with your workouts. You had healthy meals prepped before the kids came home from school. And imagine if you felt more comfortable and confident about your body and you put on whatever you felt like wearing without worrying about your weight. Book your one-hour Christian health coaching call and together we will bust through your limiting beliefs, map out simple habits that stick, create a simple health plan God's way, map out energy boosters for you as a woman over 40, and replace and pray over the changes you'll be making. If you're ready to get healthy and create habits that stick, feel comfortable, and have more energy in your 40s God's way, then I am your coach. Email me at Jacqueline at CourageousFitFemale.com Because as soon as these spots are gone, they're gone. So stop what you're doing, go to your email, and tell me in the subject line, I'm ready to get healthy and feel comfortable in my body God's way. I'm super excited to partner with God in your health journey. So let's get you set up already. That's Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N, at CourageousFitFemale.com.